In this video, I'll be showing you how to get this old chippy look. So for this DIY, I want to make a sign spelling out the word fall. So I bought this frame and these four letters at a Eurostar. I think I'll be placing them this way around, but of course you can just jiggle them about any way you want. I grabbed a whole bunch of embellishments I thought I might be able to use or maybe even not, I don't know at this stage. I'll just have to see how it goes, so I'll just paint them just in case. So here I'm adding wood glue to my embellishments and I'm using some sticky tape to help me along because um, if I put them down on the sticky tape they won't move about all over the place and I can eat much more easily put the glue on. So now my embellishments are all stuck on, I can start the painting process. And because I want a rusty, crusty, old, chippy finish, I'll be doing three different colours of paint to achieve that look. So the first colour I'll be going with is dark brown, because I want to create a rust effect. And to do that, I always start off with a dark brown base. Now I'm not using any special paints to do this, all my paints are just cheap 1 euro acrylics but because I add white glue, cornstarch and baking soda to the paint that is what will give your paint the correct rusty base and texture and will also make your paint stick on well to any surface. Um, if you don't have any cornstarch, don't worry, that's okay, you can do without that but you definitely need baking soda or bicarbonate soda because that um, is what you need to achieve the gritty texture that rust has. So I'm going to give a coat of paint to everything you see here and I'll be dabbing it on to get some texture. You know, I'm trying to make up as much texture as possible. You can just use a brush, you can use a sponge. I'm using a pom-pom. I'm also going to blast everything dry with the hairdryer, just a quick blast because this paint mixture dries really, really quick um, and it makes your paint stick on much better. It kind of bakes it on really, really well and makes such a difference to its resistance. Then after that, I'm going to give a second coat. So this is what it looks like after one coat. This is what it looks like after the second coat. As you can see, there's a big difference. So to get my rusty effect, I'm just going to be dabbing on orange and brown paint in an alternating fashion until it resembles rust. I'm not going to worry about perfection here because uh, most of this paint layer is going to be covered up anyway. Uh, but unfortunately, you know, it still has to be done. It's an important part of the look. So this is what we're trying to achieve. And here you can see the difference pretty well. Of course, I'm going to be doing this to the whole thing. And here also I'm going to be baking on with the hairdryer. So the next step I did was to take an old piece of candle and rub it all over the entire project so that the next layer of paint will just flake off easier when I brush it down. 
Okay, so now directly over the wax, I'm going to paint over the whole project. I'm using a white wall paint, but any paint will do. And of course, you can choose your own colours. So whilst the paint is still wet, I'm going to sprinkle over the whole project some normal table salt. I'm going to press it down well into the wet paint using cellophane. This too will help achieve a nice chippy effect. Okay, so now the salt is pressed down well into the paint. I need for it to dry completely. So I'm going to leave it overnight. Um, so I'm going to put it away in a safe place where no one can knock it, knock the salt off and you know, get salt all over my house. <laughs> so yeah, I'll put it on a tray and put it away in a safe place. Okay, so it's the next day and I'm ready to add my last layer of paint. Um, and this is the color I've chosen, this gorgeous green. Um, this is just wall paint, you can use any paint you like. And what I'm gonna do is just dab it on. Just dab it on willy nilly, you know, I don't wanna cover it all. I'm just gonna, um, Dab it until I get the effect that I like. Yeah, I'm really pleased with this look. It's exactly what I was looking for, you know, just old and chippy. Okay, so once again, once everything's dry, completely dry, I'm going to take this old nail brush of mine and I'm going to just rub off all the, the excess salt and whatever's left is the look that is gonna remain. Okay, so now I've brushed off all the excess salt, I'm going to put a sealer on top, uh, you know, just to seal in all that crustiness. Okay, so finally, everything's sealed and ready to put together. Um, I just glued the glass onto the frame using my white wood glue, that's all. Uh, I don't trust myself with hot glue for this project because I'll just make a mess of everything. <laughs> okay, so the glue has dried and now I can stick on my letters and my embellishments still using my white wood glue. Um, as you can see, I'm not going to be using all of my embellishments because it just looked a little bit too chaotic. So I just added uh, one little heart. I won't be putting the back onto the frame. I want to leave it transparent just for something different. So here is the end result, guys. Doesn't it look like old iron that's been painted coats and coats of paint over many, many years? So all I can say at this point is... Thank you, Salt. For my next DIY, it's going to be something a little bit more colourful this time. Um, and I'm going to make a sign with these two paper plates. These paper plates are very sturdy and high quality. And I've already done a, a DIY using these. It was for springtime. And I have a video of that, which is this one. And I'll put the link down in the description in case you want to see that. So all I did here was I painted the centre of the plate a rusty colour. I gave a couple of coats of that. Now these plates are very sturdy and hardy, but I glued them together after my paint had dried. I dried off with the hairdryer to fasten the drying process. Um, and I just uh, squirted the glue on the back and on the top of the other plate and just uh, stuck them together and weighed them down a little making sure that they stuck really well especially on the edges 
I then took some wooden letters here to write out my sentiment, which I don't know if you can understand what's written here or what I'm going to write. Probably not, <laughs> and I'll tell you why later. <laughs> um, but anyway, I helped myself with some double-sided sticky tape, and I painted these like an off-white creamy colour to contrast with the um, rusty colour. I could have left them simply as wood. That was nice as well, but I just thought um, I'd like a bit more contrast, so I painted them. Okay, so I put my plate aside and now I'm going to make some clay. You can use any clay. Um, I would have liked to have used gummy clay. Uh, I like to use that um, because it's nice and clean and lightweight, but I didn't really have any in the right colours. So I just made my own. Um, I used uh, two tablespoons of bicarbonate soda or baking soda, and one tablespoon of cornstarch, and about two to three tablespoons of water. Then I mixed it all uh, very well together and put it in the microwave at 800 watts for about 15 seconds, you know, it depends. Um, and then you take it out and you stir it with the spoon because it's very hot. And if it's too dry, then just add more water and just mix it, let it cool down, and then you can manipulate it with your hands. So when my clay was ready, I divided it into little pieces um, because I want to colour each piece a different colour. So I just got out my acrylic paints to do that. Now this handmade clay here is very, very easy to colour because it's so soft and supple and easy to manipulate. You know, you just put a little dab of paint in. It doesn't have to be any special paint, just an acrylic paint. And, and it just colours immediately. Whereas if you use DAS or something like that, that clays pretty hard on your fingers when you're trying to add colour to it. So, you know, this is perfect, this clay, to do that. So I made some flowers and leaves using the clay and the moulds. Some flowers I did, you know, just one single colour. Other flowers I did using two clays together, two coloured clays together, um, giving them a kind of like a marbly effect. And I did that with the leaves as well. Because today is very, very hot, I'm going to have to put cling film over my flowers because they're already drying up. <laughs> it's good to use two colours, especially on the leaves, because it gives it a more natural effect. Okay, so while the flowers are still wet, I'm going to glue them uh, onto the plate. I'm going to just use white glue, wood glue, um, and I'm going to do kind of like a mirror image. Whatever I glue on the top, I'll glue onto the bottom as well, uh, mirroring the image. Um, and I'll be doing all the way around the plate. I'll be gluing them on willy-nilly haven't really got a plan, just as they come, but I don't really think you can go that wrong with flowers, can you?
So now here in the centre, I'm going on my uh, autumnal sentiment, autumnal joy with a little heart in the middle. And I imagine that you didn't guess what the sentiment was going to be because the reason why you wouldn't probably guess is because I haven't got any letter A's. Because the letter A's that I'm using here are actually the letter V's upside down because I didn't have any A's left but I think it works all right <laughs> now the last thing I need to do here is just to paint um, the center yellow buttons of the flowers um, they'll all be different colors some will be black some will be yellow some will be orange etc etc so to hang up my plate, I'm just going to use double-sided sticky tape, this heavy-duty kind, because, you know, the plate is not ceramic, it's just paper, uh, so it's very light, so this is more than adequate to, ha to use to hang on the wall. And here is the reveal. Okay guys, so thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed these three DIYs. Um, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!